you can actually see the damage there. My ride home has actually continued more damage on there on the stator, uh, which I wasn't aware of. So yeah, not only is the single bolt that fell out and did I've done all the damage uh, wrecked it, it's actually done more damage since then, which I wasn't aware of. So there you go. Removing the last of the bolts here from the cover. Obviously, you can do this on the bike. You basically just have to take off the uh, gear shift lever. Um, if you have a size 14 front sprocket like I do, you're able to just get the chain up just enough to get it out. If you've got the original size 15 sprocket, you'll need to remove the sprocket first. Um, the pain, but yeah, there you go. So there's a lifting tab here, another grip point here. You can get a screwdriver in under the back here. Incidentally, you need to make all clear, uh, make sure it's clean all the way around. You don't want to drop any dirt in there, obviously. And uh, you've got the big magnet of the stator fighting you and a couple of dowels. So you need to come off straight and level, top end, bottom, end to end. Make sure that you come off level, otherwise you risk damaging the housing. Lever. See how it wants to fight back in again. It's got quite a strong magnet on that stator. Lifting here as well. My hand in the front section and we're off. Um, so almost always the gasket will be reusable. I have bought a new one. This is the third time this one's been off, so I won't reuse it again. I'll keep it as an emergency spare. Um, and also this, uh, I'm just holding my fingers up, this idler gear more often than not seems to come out in the case with its shaft. I just push in, so before putting it back together they need to be back in place, shaft seated at its full depth, otherwise when you're trying to go back on you're trying to line all that up and you actually risk damaging if it's misaligned and you do the bolts up it'll crack the case. So. See the heavy damage there to the stator. I said I will pre-assemble them with the bolts dry to make sure I've got clearance. My longer headed bolts, you can see the difference in the two heads. Now the reason I've done that is that the machining for the Allen key in the center of the factory ones actually carries down into the shank of the bolt. So if you imagine looking down inside here that it's machined down inside there, it doesn't leave a whole lot of bolt left in the head and I believe that they're stretching. So all of the Allen key pressing is contained within the head here and then there's a separate section before the thread starts. So my hope is I can use those. They're still grade 10.9 high tensile bolts, uh, good quality ones. Um, these are grade, supposed to be grade 10.9 as well but I don't believe that the heads are up to standard. Either that or the factory dry pre-fitted Loctite style uh, thread locker is one or the other, either the heads pull or the Loctite isn't up to grade. Whatever the case, the factory system doesn't work, so hence I've pulled apart a brand new part to improve it. I've just done a trial fit with only two flywheel bolts in, uh, little Allen key bolts, and they clear, with no gasket, they clear the cover, so I'm confident that there's enough clearance inside the uh, stator area to clear the, my new taller bolts or bolts with taller heads. Incidentally for future purposes the head is six millimeters high so if you're looking for your own bolts um, certainly be very wise to test them yourself. Um, I take no responsibility for someone else's motor. In my engine with my new stator six mil headed bolts clear. So yeah, definitely test them first. Make 100% certain that they're not gonna hack into your new or your old stator if you're gonna replace them. Which is grade 10.9, 12 mil millimeter long, six mil bolts. Know what you're after. Yeah, I will now lock tight all these in uh, bring them up to 25 Newton meters uh, in steps, so uh, around three, uh, yeah, a nip on each of the six and then a diamond pattern across them 
doing them all up to 25 newton meters uh, with high strength thread locker. And uh, yeah, that would be my fly well done. I can put my stator cover on and home and hosed. I have all my flywheel bolts in, they're torqued, nut is torqued, uh, gasket surface is clean. Incidentally, this is a pressure port here, this is engine oil pressure into the cover. It lubes the bearing here on the nose of the crankshaft. Uh, I've got my brand new gasket, which I'm happy to put on dry. It has a dowel here and another dowel here. The gasket comes with new ones, I haven't had to replace them. Got some silicon engine sealer on the tip of my finger. Just to put in behind my rubber grommet here for the wiring loom. Just a thin smear on there. I like grey because you can't see it very well on aluminium, doesn't look like anyone's been in there. And then a bit across the face of it as well, so it will bond to the motor. Again, that whole surface is clean. That's the oil port that comes out the back of this bearing here. So this case does have a small volume of oil which gets back to the sump. Now, as you go back on, the magnets will try and suck the cover away from you. You need to confirm that your idler shaft here is all the way home and the gear is in place and everything goes in straight. It slips away from your fingers as it goes in. Just be careful. and a couple of light taps to pop it onto the dowel. There we go, that's seated fully home. Now to replace the bolts. Torque them up and this side of the motor is now done, completed. There's a couple of different length bolts here. They become apparent as you put them back in. I haven't catalogued which ones were where. Yeah, you'll see as you go back together, some are slightly longer than others.